Whether you have been fighting hair loss for a while or you want to be proactive, I like to go over medication for hair loss. It is important to be proactive. When you first notice that your scalp is more visible, around 25% of your hair follicle may have already been lost. You have limited time to stop or potentially reverse it. The most common cause of hair loss is androgenetic alopecia. Hair follicles gradually become smaller and smaller until they die off by mainly DHT, short for dihydrotestosterone. Your body converts testosterone to DHT through 5-alpha reductase enzyme. During puberty, DHT is important for male sexual differentiation such as growth of facial, body, and pubic hair, and maturation of penis. Although DHT plays a role in sex drive after puberty, it could be more harmful as it causes hair loss and prostate problems. There are two drugs that block 5-alpha reductase enzymes, so testosterone doesn't convert to DHT. These two drugs are Finasteride, brand name is Propecia, and Dutasteride, brand name is Avodart. Finasteride blocks about 70% of DHT, while Dutasteride blocks 90% or more. Although testosterone isn't nearly as androgenic as DHT, it could partially contribute to hair loss. The main concerns men have about these two drugs is the risk of side effects related to sexual function. This includes erectile dysfunction and loss of libido. The best data that we have about sexual side effects is from a 2010 study that combined the result of 12 randomized controlled trials that compared finasteride to placebo. This study showed that in the placebo group, 3 out of 100 men reported sexual side effects. For men on finasteride, an additional 2 men out of 100 reported sexual side effects. So, sexual side effects from finasteride isn't the most common experience. Another drug category is hair growth stimulants. The only FDA-approved drug is topical minoxidil. Brand name is Rogan. Minoxidil is a medication used for blood pressure treatment. It is also effective in helping promote hair growth. It comes in a foam or lotion that is applied directly to scalp twice a day. It saves dying hair follicles by prolonging growth phase. Unfortunately, about a third of people experience ongoing hair loss despite using minoxidil. Those may benefit from microneedling and tretinoin as they increase percutaneous absorption of minoxidil. There are two main concerns that people have about minoxidil. First is that the initial month of treatments hair can shed more quickly, which makes it look like minoxidil is accelerating hair loss. The increase in hair shedding happens because hair follicles are switching from resting to growth phase. So that's why minoxidil needs to be used for at least 6 months before judging whether it's been effective. The second is that the treatment needs to be continued for the rest of life or until a new treatment is available. Adherence also could be problematic when people have to apply to their scalp twice a day, making their hair greasy. I think applying once a day is more practical. Low-dose oral minoxidil could also be used for hair loss, but it may cause hair growth all over body and risk of side effects. The next category is topical antiandrogens. Unfortunately, pharmaceutical companies have not made much progress in this area. One topical agent is RU58841, and the company ran phase 1 and 2 trials but never started phase 3. Nonetheless, it's still popular even though the long term side effects are unknown. Another agent is CB0301. It is probably going to be the first topical antiandrogen that actually gets approved for human use as a hair loss prevention treatment. However, the trial information at clinicaltrial.gov gives little away about CB0301. Ketokinazole is a medication formulated to treat fungal infection. It is thought that ketokinazole shampoo may work on hair loss by inhibiting 5-alpha reductase. Even though many supplements and shampoos claim to stop hair loss, the science behind them is weak. Multiple studies have shown that dietary supplements don't help with male pattern hair loss 
unless there is an underlying deficiency. Some low quality trials show that there may be some benefit with these agents. But these trials have a high risk of bias. For example, some of these trials lack a control group or don't have objective measures of hair growth or only test the product on a minimal number of people. There are also lots of advertisement for PRP that stands for platelet-rich plasma, but it is expensive and shows limited efficacy in hair growth, while finasteride, dutasteride, and minoxidil are affordable and effective. There are many people who lose their hair regardless of these treatments. There are more aggressive pharmacological interventions for these people, and also there are other types of hair loss, but I try to keep these videos short. Let me know if you are interested in learning about other types of hair loss and treatments.